Sup bros, today I present to you the best flashlight for everyday carry in 2019, in my opinion. So let's not fight about it, cause it's a touchy subject. So first up, let's get some things out of the way before we start with the actual review. Number 1. Who is this light for? Well for starters, you have to be the kind of person that is interested in carrying a flashlight on their person on a daily basis. Why would you do that? Simple. Because it's about to be winter here in the northern hemisphere, which means less daylight. No light, no sea. If you live in the more rural parts of whatever country you reside in, there's a chance that you will drive along country roads without any lights on a regular basis. If you are unlucky and get in an accident or stranded, you will be happy to have a decent light on your person. But it's also helpful in regular everyday situations. For example, if you are the kind of person that does, like myself, very much enjoy an evening stroll through the fields and woods at this time of the year. Now that you're on board with the concept of carrying a flashlight, you might be wondering what your options look like. Well, there are a ton, and this is really where it comes down to personal preference. If you use your flashlight only very seldomly, with little need for high output and only for short periods of time, you could get away with using a keychain type of flashlight like one of these no problem, or maybe even just your mobile phone. If you want a bit more output and runtime in a still comparatively small package, you might want to look into the small and stubby looking 16340 or AA powered flashlights like these, which would probably be more than enough for most people. That's of course unless you're among the professionals, like law enforcement, firefighters, etc. Meaning that all you care about is performance, and I mean performance not necessarily in the way of maximum output, but rather in that it performs well for its intended use case and, most importantly, that it works reliably. If you're in this category, you're probably looking at big lights and potentially even carrying your light in a holster. However, in between those last two categories, there's a niche that I'll just call the prosumer or enthusiast niche. These people just want all the performance just for the fun of it, but still be able to carry the light somewhat reasonably well in their pockets. And that's exactly where the Lumentop FW3A comes in. Number 2. What's so special about it? This light was apparently developed by some dudes on a flashlight forum and is now, obviously, being produced by Lumentop in China, with a variety of different colors, materials and LEDs. I won't go over all the stats and functions of this light, because there's just too much info here and it's probably easier for you to just look up whatever it is you need to know. To show you what I'm on about, here's the PDF manual for the FW3A that I had to load onto my iPhone just in case I mess up while I'm on the go and accidentally reprogram this thing to death. This light is complicated because yes, you can actually, at least to some degree, reprogram it meaning different output levels, temperature and step down settings, among other things, can be set to your specific needs. Which is nice, if you know what you're doing, but since all of that is done using only one button, it gets confusing really fast. I don't mean to discourage you though if you decide to buy one of these lights. This is by far the light with the most complicated user interface of all the lights I own and it actually took me a while, and some screw ups along the way, to get used to it. But once you become used to it, the light honestly becomes a part of you. You can communicate and interface with it in a way you simply can't with other lights. Want to show your current voltage readout, otherwise known as battery status? Triple press from off. Need tactical strobe? Two clicks and a long press. Need smooth ramping instead of step ramping? Triple click while on. Full 2800 lumens max output? Double click while the light is on. Electronic lockout? Four clicks from off. Want to simulate a thunderstorm with your flashlight? No problem. And so on. Sounds like a dot, and that's not even half of it. But I promise you, it's very logical once you get the hang of it, and it does become second nature fast. One of my favorite features, though, is the fact that even when the light is in an electronic lockout, it still turns on in momentary mode, with two different brightness levels. Those offer just a few lumens, which is enough to find your keys in a pinch, but not enough to burn a hole through your trousers or drain your battery if the button gets pressed by accident. Once you have familiarized yourself with the user interface, you pretty much have a perfect flashlight on you for any situation imaginable, and soon you'll be wondering how you were ever able to exist without having all of these options. Compared to this guy, most other lights feel like going back to a flip phone. The maximum output of 2800 lumens means that you're pretty much never lacking in firepower, and the 18650 battery will give you enough juice to last you even through the darkest of nights. The way I use my lights for my evening walks is that I dial it down to a fairly low setting, so that my eyes will be able to adjust to the surrounding darkness and I retain my night vision. If I do however need more light to see where some noise came from or whatever, I have 2800 lumen max output at my disposal at any given moment, which is insanely impressive, especially when your eyes are adjusted to pretty much seeing in the dark. It really gives you that stadium floodlight vibe that you crave for. Just to emphasize this point even further, 
This big boy flashlight is a through night TN30 from 2016 with a max output of about 3600 lumens. It uses 4, yes 4, 18650 batteries and is ridiculously huge compared to the FW3A, but provides only marginally more light. Sure, the big guy has the advantage in stamina and heat dissipation, leading to it being able to keep that level of brightness up for longer, but you get what I'm saying. It's impressive how far flashlight technology has come over the past few years. One last word about the batteries before we move on. As I said, it uses an 18650 battery. That doesn't come with the light, and because of that short barrel, a protected cell will not fit. That's not an issue if you know what you're doing, but since unprotected cells might explode when handled in a wrong way, they aren't for everyone. So you better make sure you know what you're doing. Number 3. Materials and Quality As I said before, the FW3A is available in a variety of materials. Quick info on the naming scheme, the number stands for the amount of LEDs in the emitter. FW3A means 3 LEDs. There's now also an FW1A, which, as you guessed correctly, uses a single LED. The letter at the end stands for the material that the body of the flashlight is made of. I have an FW3A, A is an aluminium, raw aluminium in my case to be precise, and an FW3T, T as in titanium, which kind of finished titanium you ask? Stonewash titanium, that's what. With a bit of individualization around the bezel, but we'll get to that in a minute. Just FYI, there are also colored aluminium versions available, as well as copper and now even stainless steel, as well as different surface finishes, so you got them options. Also, for your LED nerds out there, you have a choice of several different Cree, Nitsia or Luminous emitters. So how about that fit and finish? Well, it's a mixed bag, I have to say, and it's honestly my biggest gripe with the whole flashlight. Even before buying my FW3T, I saw pictures and videos online of guys with non-working LEDs or malfunctioning switches. Mine was among the first batch of titanium models that were sold and it arrived with a cracked lens. No biggie, I thought. It comes with a mineral glass in front of the actual optic and I was planning to swap that for a sapphire one anyway. So I ordered the sapphire glass and, while I was at it, also a more focused Carclo 10507 optic to replace the 10511 it came with. However, when I tried to unscrew the front element, I wasn't able to because the threading has apparently not been properly deburred. That made me kind of angry, so I went medieval. And let me tell you, I won that fight. The flashlight survived luckily, but as you can see, not without its share of scars. Aside from that, I, like many others, had problems with the switch not working properly every now and then. The light uses an electronic switch, which is a complicated system, so don't ask. All you need to know, and honestly all that I really understand of it myself, is that the inner tube must always make contact with the head and the tail of the light to transfer the signal. My light stopped misbehaving after I cleaned the whole inside of the light properly, as well as the threading and treated the contacts with some deoxid. Now fast forward a few weeks and I decided to get an FW3A in raw aluminium as well, because it was cheap. I liked how it looked and I wanted to see what the light is like with Nitsia 219Cs. This one arrived with no issues whatsoever. The threads were properly lubricated and everything ran incredibly smoothly. I have not had any issues with the switch on this guy over the past 4 or 5 weeks that I've owned it now and I've used it a fair bit. So either they are just better at producing the aluminium body, since aluminium as a material is just easier to work with than titanium. Or they have corrected whatever issue there might have been on the first release batch and upped their quality control game. Either way, right now I would recommend to go with the aluminium body. But if you have any insight into this, or have bought a titanium model yourself more recently, please let me know what your experience has been like in terms of reliability, as well as fit and finish. Number 4. Conclusion Well, that was a lot, wasn't it? Overall, I stand by my initial statement. I think for the money, this is the best EDC flashlight for enthusiasts. I know that there are a lot of other great lights on the market, especially when you're getting into custom lights. And obviously, your tastes and needs may be different than mine. Unlike a lot of those custom flashlights though, you can actually buy this light right now and don't have to wait until a small batch of lights gets released and pray that you're among the lucky few early enough to snatch one up. Also, keep in mind that this light is available for something around the $35 to $100 price range, depending on your choice of materials. Considering how capable this light is and the quality of the LEDs and materials that are being used, that's an amazingly low price. Would I prefer to be a bit more expensive and have better quality control? Yes. But, as I said previously, there is a chance that they have been able to iron out their problems by now anyway, so never mind. To sum it up, this light is definitely not for everyone. But if you have made it this far into the review and you are not generally opposed to carrying a light of this size, which I honestly have been myself for the longest time, I would recommend giving it a try. 
It might feel a little frustrating and unforgiving at first, but I promise you, it is worth it. At least it was for me. That's it for this video. Just a quick note on a personal matter. I managed to break my camera, the Fuji X-T30. Had it mounted on a tripod, tipped that tripod over, the camera hit the ground lens first, which shattered the filter on the lens and ripped my camera in two. Half of my camera was still attached to the tripod, the other half was somewhere on the floor. Bad times. I was borderline apoplectic for a minute. If you get the feeling that the quality is somewhat different over the next few weeks, that's because my main camera is off for repairs, so bear with me. Anyway, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Despite my recent bad luck, I will continue to release one or two videos every week with topics around the EDC, outdoor and gear world. If you liked the video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. In case you have any questions, suggestions or own experiences to share, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and take care.